When it strikes, it does so silently. There are 400,000 Australians who don't even know they've got it, and they risk strokes, heart attacks, blindness, and losing arms and legs. Diabetes type 2, it's called, or late-onset diabetes, and it's cause for great alarm because it's out of control. Why? Well, it seems because of the way we Australians are living our lives. Just in our industry alone, we found terrible examples of this disease, so the chances are the silent killer is hitting or will hit your family and your friends. A trio of television troopers, Bobby Lim, Barbara Rogers and Lucky Grills. Pictures of health, all three. But really, a snapshot of what can and is afflicting Australians in all walks of life. If you know about it and go and get on a, st a strict regimen, you can handle, handle the diabetes. But if you don't do anything about it, it will kill you. All of a sudden, I'm starting to feel old because of the, the diabetes and the symptoms attached to it. It's a silent death. They call it the silent death because uh, you don't know. It's, it's like other sicknesses. It's working 24 hours a day if you don't control it. It's not popular, it's not in the public eye, and yet it is one of the most important diseases in this country. Professor Don Chisholm runs the Diabetes Laboratory at Sydney's Garvin Institute and is searching for a cure for a form of diabetes that is so out of control it's doubling the number of its victims every 10 years. I mean, up against AIDS, what sort of research money would you get? I can't tell you the exact numbers, but proportional to the cause of ill health and death, the funding for diabetes is a small fraction of the funding for AIDS. That gets you upset? Yes. What image does diabetes conjure up for you? Needles, insulin and kids suffering from it from a very early age? Yes, that's type 1 diabetes, but for all the people that suffer from that, many, many times that number suffer from type 2. And what's infuriating about type 2 diabetes is that the symptoms are so ambiguous. Half the people suffering from it don't know they've got it, but if it's ignored, it can kill you. It's a very great killer. The chances of dying from a coronary are over three times as much if, you, if you've got diabetes. The chances of having an amputation of a leg are more than ten times as great. Uh, the chances of having kidney failure are enormously increased. The Bobby Lim Show. <laughs> Back when TV was black and white, Dawn Lake and Bobby Lim were entertainment royalty. Bobby was the most recognised person on television. Feeling a little under the weather, dear? It was those very Australian idioms he made light of, too much grog, too many cigarettes and too little exercise, that bring on type 2 diabetes. Oh, and there's that other aspect of modern day living too, the one that got Bobby, stress. So you weren't born with it, it's not something you caught, it's something you contracted late that's in right. life. That's right, and that's what happens a lot of times. I got it because of the stress shock to my system. Stress can cause it, diabetes, and there's a lot of stress around today, as you know. It's ready. Right. Yeah. So what, what do you do here, Bob? Well, we get this little gun. It's kind of a little gun, it's like a pen. And you put that in there. So how often do you do this, Bob? Every day. Medically, type 2 diabetes is caused by the failure of the pancreas to produce yes, sufficient you know, insulin a, to allow sugar, or glucose, to be absorbed into the cells of our bodies. The effect? Not enough sugar in our cells means no energy, and muscles, like the heart, stop working. We're looking for anything between 3 and 7. This is like a shuttle liftoff or something. Yeah, and here's the reading. 8.7, oh, I'm too high. Which oh, means, I see. see, I should be between three and seven. So you're a fraction over? Just a fraction over. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll hit the oval. Oh, go for a walk? Go for a walk. Diabetes sufferers live or die by their baby computers. If the numbers are too high, some fast exercise is needed. If the numbers are too low, a quick fix of jelly beans can be the lifesaver. I gather you've had good blood pressure. 
Yes, I got very good blood pressure because I, fortunately, I'm a non drinker and I'm a non smoker. For 50 well, years, gone. Lucky Grills has trod the entertainment boards. Actor, singer, comedian, he's been big in the hearts and the eyes of his audiences. Lucky's battle with his bulge and his family history meant he was a diabetes patient just waiting to happen. And happen it did, 11 years ago. My brother, he's the diabetic. My father was a diabetic. My grandmother was a diabetic. So it could be hereditary, which I think it is. Um, but different uh, people have different, are affected differently by it. You couldn't get a better example of that than Barbara Rogers. Like Bobby and Lucky, she tries to do the right thing. Plenty of exercise, no alcohol, only good food for her. But to no avail. I, I hate every moment of it. Because all of a sudden when I feel I'm in control, away I go again. And then I can go, some days I can be like, for instance, today I'm up over 15s, which is high for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that starts to bring chest pains on. And then, you know, in a couple of days' time, I could drop drastically low to twos and threes and then become very disorientated and don't know where I am and all that sort of thing. And now, here's your host, Tony Temptation Barber. Barbara used to be Barbie Rogers, much, Tony Bob. Barber's sidekick on The Great Temptation. In basic black, ladies and gentlemen, Barbie Rogers. She's had diabetes for the last seven years, and now it's a great achievement if some days she even manages to get out of bed. Because I, I go to the trouble of doing myself up and doing my hair, and my, people think there's nothing wrong with you. Um, I know that's the old, the old conditioning in my upbringing. Um, when there's some days, you know, you find that you're lucky to put one foot in front of the other. Eight, eight only, 19, one nine. Barbara used to think of herself as young for her age. Now she calls the bingo at her local club a couple of hours a week. It's all she can manage, and that's with the help of her tablets and twice daily insulin injections. Five, five only. I just can't cope under pressure at all. You don't look old to me. Oh, you're so nice. You don't need your eyes testing at all, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but I will take that compliment. Thank you. It's terribly common. About 800,000 people in Australia have diabetes and about half of those, about 400,000, don't know they've got it. That's incredible. 400,000 don't know they've got it. That's right. When I first got diabetes, uh, it was, uh, let me say, at a very small level and therefore I wasn't presenting any problem. I simply didn't take it seriously enough or do something about it. I continued to smoke uh, fairly heavily and I continued to drink. Wilf Barker is a hugely successful business executive and TV marketing consultant. Good morning. Good morning. He's known about his diabetes for more than 10 years. Two and a half years ago, still drinking and with a cigarette in hand, he went to see a doctor about a tiny sore on his toe. I'll arrange that Jimmy's here at the same time. He uh, took a look at it oh, cool. and he said, um, you've uh, got gangrene. So he said, uh, unless you um, get into hospital in the next couple of hours, um, then I'm afraid you are positively going to lose your toe. And if you want to wait till tomorrow, I won't take any odds on not taking your foot. Diabetes, largely ignored, coupled with an excessive lifestyle, almost ended Wolf Barker's life. In the nick of time, he started taking the disease seriously. But even that wasn't enough to save his toes. Now, it's cost me two toes, some bones in my feet. It's cost me two um, uh, lenses, a lens in each eye. I've got a, a, um, an artificial interocular lens in each eye. It's cost me all those things and a lot more. But look, the long and the short of it is, you were a mug for not doing something about it eight or nine years ago. Self-admitted, yes, I was a mug. Mr Starr, if you look on your right-hand side over here on the monitor screen, this is a picture of a normal eye. 
The news is not all bleak. While doctors can't talk about a cure, existing medicine can treat some of the problems. But in many cases, if not most, good old-fashioned common sense is the best medicine. And that's all. Stepping out with my baby can't go wrong cause I'm all right. Bobby Lim may have left television, but there's no way he'll ever get out of entertainment. Not even diabetes can stop that. At 70-something, he's kept busy producing a successful cabaret show for tourists and says, thanks to smart living, he's now never felt better. Fit as a fiddle. A lot of people, you know, this is the stigma. This is the one thing they say, he's got, oh, he's got diabetes. Well, goodness gracious, I've never felt better in my life. I've said to people, you know, my goodness, you look wonderful today. You must have diabetes. Because that's, if you control it, that's what you can do. If I've got it, what do I do? You diet and you exercise. And if you do nothing about it? Well, it's a tragedy when I meet someone who's been undiagnosed for a long time or who's ignored their diabetes and they're going blind or they've got to have an amputation or they're about to have a coronary. If you don't do something about it and... Uh... You could very easily die suddenly and uh, that would be caused by the diabetes. So if you don't want to die, do something about it. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.